Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include David Cameron can't count on the Tory truce over the EU lasting. UK exit from European Union risks infrastructure funding, says Hitachi. Comprehensive EU fishery strategy in the Pacific region. And the European Union's plea in Russian car levy row. Plus, price of your holiday will go up thanks to Euro court tax ruling. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, Margaret Thatcher, Edward Heath, John Major, all three Conservative Prime Ministers tried to unite their party on Europe, but... Adam Afrihi, an aspirant Tory leader himself, has triumphed where these three failed, as Joe Swinson, a Liberal Democrat minister, cruelly pointed out on Question Time last week. Mr Afrihi, who was sitting next to her, looked none too pleased to be reminded of it. Almost every Conservative MP elected in 2010 signed a letter to Mr Afrihi, urging him to drop his support for a referendum on Britain's EU membership before 2015. Question. Pardon me? <laughs> you mean to tell me that almost every Conservative MP wrote to Mr Afrayi asking him to step down from standing up from the democratic rights of the people of Great Britain? That every Conservative MP wanted to silence the voice of the British people over a subject critical to their existence as an independent national state? Has the government of the UK become so corrupt and misguided that it has completely lost sight of the democratic process. Folks, it's time to break out the digital fool's cap and scribe another email to your MP. If I might be so bold as to suggest an opening line. What the hell do you think you're playing at? David Cameron has been warned by one of Japan's biggest UK investors that pulling out of the European Union could put at risk £1 billion of funding for Britain's railways and nuclear energy programmes. The president of Hitachi, Hirokai Nakanishi, has revealed that he met the Prime Minister in May and raised his concerns. Speaking in Tokyo, he said that any exit from the EU could lead to less investment by the industrial giant. In November last year, Hitachi signed a £696 million deal to buy Horizon Nuclear Power, a joint venture with General Electric, to build as many as six nuclear reactors at two sites, Wilfer in North Wales and Oldbury in South Gloucestershire. OK, let's stop for a second and put the record straight here. The media is using the term investment, but it isn't investment, it's an asset buyout. It's a further degradation of Britain's ability to remain independent. The power companies were sold off under the Thatcher privatisation schemes. The results? Increased energy prices, less capacity as foreign shareholders seek to profit. Now, no one in the media is talking about China, but China is buying up huge asset swages across Europe and the US as it looks to diversify its holding of US treasuries, which are looking decidedly shaky. Now, Mr Nakanishi is writing cheques his body can't cash. Japan is broke. It has a national debt level similar to the UK, and its policy is to print money and then print more money. Well, that's economic suicide. Chairman Cameron's government is weak, and it's behaving like a bullied kid in the playground. Listen, Dave, it's time you grew a set and started batting for the home team. The people of Britain want a UK government that is investing in UK, that is hawking to trade globally, that is self-respecting and respecting of others, has the authority to self-govern, is independent and sovereign. Your dilly-dallying deception and lies is no good for us, and certainly no good for you. The Pacific Ocean is extremely rich in fish and is the largest fishing ground for highly migratory species, in particular tuna, which accounts for 80% of the world's catch. Furthermore, it is estimated that approximately 50% of tuna caught across the globe today is taken from waters of the western and central Pacific, and these fish, 80%, are caught in exclusive economic zones of island states and only 20% are caught in international waters. Now, this report states that the EU should be supporting the current regional efforts to address overcapacity and improve fisheries management. 
Overfishing is a consequence of purse signers, mainly from Asia and the island states, and increasing the fishing effort and also illegal fishing. Therefore, a targeted strategy is to proposed. Well, quietly and hardly reported in the mainstream media, we have a crisis looming. Fish stocks in the waters of Europe are almost depleted. The Common Fisheries Policy and the Euro Bureau's parliamentary buffoons' complete impotence to effect any legislative change, even in the face of high-profile public campaign of outrage led by Hugh Fernley Whittingstall, has ensured that nothing has been done to stop the rot. Look through our legislation section and search for fish or fishing, and you'll see that the EU is busy trying to mitigate this crisis by bullying small nations into handing over their fish stocks or providing access to fishing rights. This is happening off the coast of West Africa and now in the islands of the Pacific region. There is little that can be done because, as we discovered yesterday in our Critical Thinking live show, the MEPs and EU Parliament is really just a puppet show. Although I prefer to think of it as a Muppet show. Barroso reminds me of Dr Bunsen Honeydew and Van Rompuy. Well, he's Beaker, you know, that wimpy skinny one who follows the orders. Now, just for fun, I tagged this short Muppet sketch on at the end of tonight's Nightly News as Dr Honeydew, Barroso, sets about cloning Beaker's Van Rompuy. Well, when all else fails, you've got to turn to comedy. The European Union asked the World Trade Organization yesterday to rule on the legality of a recycling fee Russia imposes on imported cars, stepping up a trade dispute between the two. The European Commission, the EU's executive arm, said it had asked the WTO to establish a dispute settlement panel to adjudicate on the fee. The EU, EU believes the charge discriminates against EU vehicle exports to Russia, where some 10 billion euros per year. So slowly, the burner is bringing the pan to the boil in regard to the economic wrestling between the European Union and the Eurasian Union. This will probably be called out as a retaliation to the Ukraine joining the EU instead of the EUA, Eurasian Union. Interestingly, for a source of news critical to a significant sector of the vehicle manufacturing market, I noticed that Andrew had to dig hard to find this nugget of economic news, which was only really reported in the Yorkshire Post. The tension is there between Europe and Russia, and the vested interests deeply overlap. So you can expect more news on the EU and EAU front in due course. And as ever, we'll keep you posted. Families face paying more for their holidays after a ruling handed down by the European Court in Luxembourg. The decision by the EU's Court of Justice affects the complex way VAT on travel is calculated on package holidays within the European Union. Certain tax exemptions secured when Britain joined the EU are set to be abolished, forcing tour operators to pass on the higher costs to holidaymakers. And tax experts claim the change could lead to a 3% increase in the average cost of a package holiday. Well, that would mean that a family of four taking a £4,000 peak season trip, including flights and a villa in Spain or Greece, forking out an additional £120 more. Now, surely the collapsing real estate markets in Spain and Greece, and now this VAT increase policy, well, it would make more sense just to chuck in the extra £500 and buy a whole apartment building in the Costa del Bankrupt. Heck, that's what the Chinese are doing. Today in our video library, well folks, our new live show Critical Thinking had critical issues yesterday. Once again I apologise for the delay in getting started, turns out that the Apple Mac OS X operating system was terrible at operating the Google Hangouts system as I couldn't get the camera or speakers to work. Now unfortunately Trevor Coleman MEP was unable to attend the show as he had been called away to an audience with the Queen. And well, frankly, if it's going to be a choice between getting frustrated with technical problems on a computer or tea in the garden at Buckingham Palace, then I know which one I would choose. However, the show is available in its unedited form and you can find it in the critical thinking section of our video library. However, onwards and upwards, as we are determined here at the unit to get this interactive hangout show working correctly, we are looking for panel members and audience participation. The idea is that critical thinking will be an internet-based question time style show. 
where my guests and I interact with others who join the Hangout, and we can discuss and interact around the current topics of the European Union. To get involved in an interactive way, as opposed to simply viewing the show live on our website or via YouTube, then you will need to have a Google Plus account. Now follow the links below to our Google Plus page and you'll be prompted to set up your own free account if you've not already got one. And follow the instructions on screen, it's pretty simple. Once signed up, then come along and join our community, The Unit. I post the key news story of the day there, along with videos for you to comment on, and you'll also find the event invitations for Critical Thinking Show there too. The next episode of Critical Thinking will be on Wednesday the 6th of November at 2pm. We never understand how important our individual voices are until we stop using them. Silence is taken by the establishment to mean acceptance. And with the state of things as they are, it's time we all spoke out. So come on in and join us. Together we can make a difference. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. where the future is being made today. And what a sad day it is, too, for Beaker, my fickle and wayward assistant, has gone missing. <laughs> so I guess I'll have to demonstrate Muppet Lab's new copying machine, a la carte. <laughs> Beaker, what were you doing in there? If you've broken that machine, I shall have to dump your salary. Hey! 